Hello again, citizens. This is Mr. Everything from the First Royal Aerospace Squadron, and I am coming to you today with a ship review uh, walkthrough, walk around, walkthrough, and it is the Retaliator, and I would like to I'll point out that there are some things I like and there are some things I don't like about the Retaliator. And I'm going to let you really kind of make those decisions on your own, but I am going to kind of point out any graphical issues or errors that I have. So let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, I'm going to walk around the outside and uh, it looks like that color of blue, as you can see, like there's these two semicircles and a big, right in the center of my screen is the engines the upper engine, lower engine, and like a center engine. Those are lights uh, for the engine or something. Well, these tail booms that stick way out also have the exact same color. And you notice how the engines underneath the wings, the engine nacelles, all have that same color in the back. So I'm thinking that's where all my thrust is coming from. It's coming from the um, <clears throat> What is that? The six on the left. I thought there was two in the front, but I only, I mean, two on each side in the front, but I could be wrong. Let's take a key. So, what I'm trying to say is these booms that stick out right here have that same color. So, does that mean that there is going to be a little bit of an engine thrust coming out of that? Or is that going to be part of my maneuvering thruster nacelle? Or I'm not sure what. Okay. So let's kind of take a look, and we're going to go clockwise around the ship. Now, of course, there are wings. Um, you have tail fins. You have the tail itself. That's this red line here, and then you got the tail fin up there. And those are going to be great for atmospheric fight, flight, along with uh, this folding wing, which... Uh, has uh, ailerons on it. It's great for atmospheric flight yet again. Okay, we continue on. I'm going to get a little bit closer now. Uh, there's a little blue thing right there. Now, is it just blue lighting or is that where the thrust comes from? See, now I don't know. Okay, and there is a little jittering. I don't know if this is the double precision in the PTU 1.1, but when I move and stop my mouse, you get a little extra little extra like lock pop right there just like that stop pop so it's like pop and lock okay so now let's get a little closer to the legs okay the, these legs great decals Aegis right hydraulics Aegis dynamics and then you know everything on the left side is great Aegis got little holes right there where you can see through uh, when the landing gear closes now the flashing is actually my hangar has these lights flashing and that's why you see reflections off of the um, surface of the retaliator. Now when you get close, you can see you've got the, uh, what do you call it, um, so there's like this blue glow deep inside and I don't know if that's shining through the metal because you wouldn't see any blue glow unless that unless that's what's reflecting I don't know what this blue reflection is um, okay it's unusual that the ship is landed with the engine the cells in flight mode I would have figured they would have been pointing straight up and down but this is pretty cool that they're laying down uh, for now and also like when we do repair now I wanted to get inside my uh, landing gear hub. You notice how there's some lights there. Uh, that'll help with, with landing, I suppose, or f when troops are boarding. Uh, let, let's say we land on the dark side of the moon. Those lights are going to keep this underbody area lit so that I could uh, use uh, or do things without like tripping over ourselves. Okay, and the landing gear would, I assume, retract up into the landing gear bay. And then look at the details. Just let's, let's just take a few seconds to look at the details. It's grungy. It's dirty. It needs to be washed. 
Okay, but it looks cool. Serial numbers, caution. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Okay, let's get out of that. You got like intakes for the engines, uh, the lower engines. Remember, there's lower and upper engines, and those are separated. Okay. This looks like it might be another intake for some engines. Maybe the engine to cell area. Wing. Yeah. Okay, continuing on. We're not going inside just yet. These are the bomb bay doors. Uh, very cool. Now this ship is fairly large and it's extremely detailed. So uh, the video might actually be fairly long. So um, a lot of people are excited about this ship. And so if you're excited about this ship, I bet you don't mind if the video is long. Got the high, uh, we got the um, hydraulics right there to raise the gear. And I can only imagine uh, that thing sliding back at the same time, hydraulics lifting it and putting it into its place. That'll be pretty, pretty darn cool when we get to see all that in action. Uh, something about the tail here, this engine nozzle, I really get excited about. It's just the color and the shape and everything. Uh, and then like a little secondary exhaust right here I thought was pretty cool for the engines. Okay, continuing on, moving around. You got your intakes. Every engine's got its own intake. You know? Um... The landing gear, remember, Aegis Hydraulics or Aegis Dynamics, and you notice there's a landing, that landing gear there has its own light also. Now these landing gears, uh, they have their light up here and not down here, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, bump, 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 bump. Take a look, take a look around. Now, we've gone around 50% of this ship. Okay, look, we've got the nose beak. It's got some handles, so in zero G, you could like, hold on to it. Uh, but when you come onto this side, and this might, I don't know if it's necessarily a bug, but when you come on this side, you notice the decals are reversed. That makes me think that they made the landing gear uh, and they just flipped it over, or the, at least the decals, they just flipped them over and didn't like rearrange them or get a second set of them or something. Because they're both, everything on this side is upside down and backwards. Well, not upside down, but it's just like, Mirror image. Okay, look at the look at the pipes and the wiring in the landing gear compartment. And you got the pipes on the or I should say the conduit on the back side of the landing gear. That's really cool. Uh, did a really good job in the uh, UK. There's just like some minor things that need to be fixed. You know, you got your got your little. Uh, serial number plate right there, uh, but guess what? It's um, reversed. Okay, so continuing on, continuing on. Anything really different on this side than it was on the other side? No. It's pretty symmetrical when it comes to the outside. It's just the decals. Okay, you saw everything on the outside. Now let's take a look at, and this is from the bottom, looking up. Uh, I will do a top down in here in just a minute. Okay, you'll notice you got two turrets. You got the tail gunner. That's what I'm going to call this one. Uh, because technically, any turret on the top would be the ventral turrets, and any, or is that the bottom? And then every turret on the top would be the dorsal tur turrets. So you got dorsal and ventral. Uh, and then you got fore and aft. So this would be the ventral aft, and then that would be the ventral fore. But that's not what I'm going to call it. This one I'm going to call the tail gunner. Look at the tail ball turret, you know. And then the front one there I'm going to call the chin turret. And then there's one at the top I'm going to call the top gunner, top gun, you know. And then there's two in the back over the wings. And I'm going to call that the left and right wing gunners. Or waist gunners. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, so there will be a little there'll be a little 
nomenclature nominations, you know, for my crew. And, okay, what is this? I, I didn't see that. What are those like? Little black lines. I don't know. Vents of some kind. Okay, pretty cool. There's a little light right there, too. There's the engine, how it's kind of housed so that I could fire it from back here. That's pretty darn cool. And the red stripe and the gray. Uh, it, it's cool, but and the 42, yeah, it's all right, but I'm going to repaint it. And uh, what I'll probably do is take uh, two or three shots from different angles and then go through it and repaint it myself, you know, so. Okay, now all my turrets have these badgers on them, bulldog, badger, uh, panthers, or whatever they are. Uh, basically repeating lasers, which is pretty cool. But they seem to be a lot larger than the ones on my Hornet, so maybe they're size 4. I mean, I'll have to look. I think they're only size 3, but... Uh, Okay, uh, bum, 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 bum. let's see what else. That's pretty much it. It is also in my hollow table, so you can like add and subtract different weapons to it and stuff like that. But guess what? It's not flyable, so it's not no ne not necessary to do that. Okay, so let's uh, let's do the surface. Let's do the top. Um, I'm gonna cut the video just a second while I take the elevator up to the canopy uh, to the balcony and then jump down. Okay, right now I am at the tail of the retaliator. You can see the Aegis Dynamics logo on the wing tips. Uh, I'm going to call those my tail fins. Okay, sorry, I was getting a little brain dead. The tails are the ones going down. The tail fins are the ones that go up. Uh, but I'm at the back of the ship, right, the very far back, and we're going to go forward. You can kind of see the, I don't want to fall off, but you can see the engines on the left and right. And you see a lot of these little, uh, these little holes right here, and uh, those are lift points uh, where you could, like, attach a, a carabiner with a, from a crane where the, the plane, or I should say the bomber, could be lifted. Uh, you're going to see a lot of those uh, scattered all around the plane. I call it a plane because it does have atmospheric flight. Okay, so we continue on, even though it is a space plane, I guess, an aerospace plane. I wonder if that's one of my thrusters. I'm not sure. Okay, continuing on, going forward, you got your turrets right here. Uh, just look at the detail. Just that's probably a spot that you can cut open or does automatically open. But they're sure. Oh, that's a pretty gigantic laser, isn't it? I mean, I think that's bigger than a panther. If not, it is a panther, uh, and that would be where your turret seat would be don't 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 fall into the ship okay it would lift up and then you would take control with those handles right there uh, you can kind of see how much you would be able to uh, shoot from back here you know you got your if you were in the turret okay so you're you've got a pretty clear field of fire uh, in most directions okay so same thing with the left side now most of this uh, most of this greebling is what I'm going to call it, all along the center spine of the ship is mainly just for looks. I don't know what these things would be. You know, there might be more intakes for the engines or whatever. But these are definitely uh, maneuvering thrusters. These four right here are definitely my center of mass maneuvering thrusters. Uh, so we're going to continue on. There's your top docking collar, so when you are needing to like uh, dock with a friendly ship or whatever, you can dock with that. And then we continue on forward. All this is just greebling, which is basically just trying to make it look cooler. It doesn't really serve any purpose that I know of. And we're going to continue on, right? But it does look cool. I'll have to say that. It is a cool looking ship. Okay, now you're going to see one, two, three, and four. Uh, but there should be a 5 and a 6 underneath these, uh, the 1 and the 3, because there's a total of 6 beds in the, uh, or, or when the 1 and the 3 launch, they have 2 beds attached, so it's like a bigger life pod. But I think it actually, uh, 
I think these life pods eject or can be ejected, and uh, I think there's six of them based on what I saw on the inside. Now, I doubt if that's a maneuvering thruster, it's, but you never know what that could possibly be, but it's the same color as all my other thrusters, the light blue. Okay, moving forward. Um, I'll back up, back up, back up. There are windows here that you can look down inside and see the bunks, and that's pretty cool. Okay, continuing on. Okay, and here's the top turret right there, also with the same type of guns. They're pretty darn gigantimundo. Gigantic. Okay. So this is the observation deck where you can actually, if you were standing in there, you could look out and up. Uh, but you can see the life support tubing, and there's probably a lot of electronics that run inside those tubes also. But primarily those are uh, probably air conditioning, air filtration. They provide air, I'm kind of guessing. And the red ones might be some kind of power. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, yellow is probably computerized, computer cable, you know. Uh, but I could be wrong. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm sure it's got some kind of color scheme that that matters. And then there's that turret in the top. Now, just imagine if you were in that turret, you're all going to crouch, right? And this would be your turret, you know? You're able to pretty much shoot in every direction. Uh, that's pretty sexy. Okay. Okay, I'm moving forward uh, on the surface of this thing. Uh, there is a boom that sticks out right here. Uh, a lot of my uh, squatter mates and myself are postulating that this possibly could be a refueling boom, like maybe it does extend or open up and extend because there is no hole on the front of it. Uh, but it's it could also be some kind of sensor boom. It's definitely not a pedo tube or something like that. Uh, those are usually located on wings, but you never know. And uh, on both sides, there's like a little rescue tab right there, uh, which <clears throat> we're thinking that it's going to blow like explosive bolts or something on the canopy to kind of rescue someone that's inside. But if you take a close look at the glass, all around the outer edge of the glass, you get this tan strip. Uh, now, if you're familiar with aircraft, they usually have, well, some have uh, debt cord. Uh, embedded into the glass so that if anybody ever needed to eject or if you needed to blow the canopy you could and that deck cord would fire preventing you from when you eject from uh, slamming up against the glass so that's pretty cool and inside there I don't know I don't know, I don't know. I'm trying to find like locate all my maneuvering thrusters and I can't find them all Okay, so we've seen, and some of the decals on the left side are all upside down, you know, uh, maybe not. So, decals, uh, serial numbers, racing stripes, that's all pretty cool. You know, and that's got his little uh, aileron elevators. Okay, so now let's go on the inside, because I know you're all dying to see what's inside this thing. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go right there to the elevator. I mean, you don't even have to point at it, I don't think. Oh, what's this? I don't remember seeing that. But either way, oh, something I didn't notice, or didn't tell you. Uh, the docking collar on the bottom looks like it has some kind of ladder that would extend uh, down so that you could climb up into it through that. Uh, maybe if you're on a planet or something and you don't want to do, you don't want to use the elevators or unable to use the elevators or something, you can actually drop that ladder. Okay, here we go. Comes the elevator, door opens, Aegis Dynamics, warning, we're in, right? And I hit it again, the thing closes, and we go on up inside. Okay, initial impression, right? On the inside, we got 
Okay, what is this? Safety. Whoops, I almost had it. Safety approval. Owned by Aegis Dynamics. No, it's not. This is owned by Mr. Everything. And we you've got lift two and you, across the hall there you got lift one. Um, pretty pretty darn cool. You got the keep does it say keep clear when door is operational? Okay. Okay, so that's towards the tail end of the ship, and this is towards the front end of the ship. Now, if, before we go to the side doors, I'm just going to go straight up the center, and uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, mm, 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 yeah, might as well, right? I'm going to show you the bombs, the torpedoes. We got two on the left side, one there, one there. We got two on the left, right side, one there, one there, and there's the center shaft that runs through the bomb bay. Uh, those center shafts run into these things right here and I guess that allows the torpedoes to roll into place to drop like you could drop these two then you roll the next two into place and drop two more. Uh, now these devices here are cranes that will reach down uh, they're articulate you know you got the hinges hinges there there and there and it'll reach down grab the next torpedo and bring it up like when you get to your reload station and this is not a door up here this is a window I mean, you can look forward and see the cockpit and everything but it's not a door and those things spin there's a caution and let's get out of this room even though you just take a look at all the details like there's the hydraulics to lower the bomb bay doors you know the torpedoes, thruster points and all that. Yeah, it's pretty pretty darn sexy. Okay, we're getting out of that. And uh, I'm going to go to the right first because it's a, it's a short walk. Okay, we come on to the right. You'll notice you see little handles all around the walls. Like there's a couple of handles there and a couple of handles here. That's so that if it ever goes into zero G, you'll have something to grip onto and move around with ease. But this is the shower. Okay, you've got not drinking water, hot and cold. And you can grab on. Okay, and then when you come out, you've got, of course, the wash basin basin to shave or to uh, just wash your hands or whatever. And then, what does it say? Not drinking water. And then right here, you've got the toilet. And uh, there's a little container box right there called toilet supplies. What would that be? Maybe... Uh, toilet paper, hmm, maybe some baby powder, maybe some handy wipes, I don't know, but that's what it would be in there, that's what I would suspect. And then down here you're looking at shower supplies, so like towels, soap, shampoo, junk like that. And of course you have a med kit, like right here in the john, you know, or, or I should say the head. Okay, and then you got lockers, because uh, people want to put their clothes up before they take a shower together. Okay, we got our power, we got our fuel, uh, we've got our avionics or computerized cable, and we've got uh, what's black again? I don't remember. Okay, <laughs> this is this is one of the three glitches, or actually, there's a few glitches, but this is one of them right here. This is. Um, Obviously, it's the air duct, and they put to get, and there's another spot right there. They put the curved piece in the bottom, connected it to the straight piece that goes up, and there was a seam, and they were going to cover that with some kind of tape, maybe, to make it look like it was, what, uh, it was seamless, but it didn't. Okay, so now... Let's see what else. Okay, da, da, da. yeah, we got the air conditioning life support. Looks like it's whoa, come on now. Looks like it's right in through this area, and this might be a place where you control your life support and a lot of other. I'm not sure what else. Fire, maybe damage control could be controlled from here. Uh, a lot of things. Now, why does the air vents? Because that's what these look like. They look like air vents. Now, why are they feeding air into this little section right here? And this section right here, I don't know. I just don't know. 
Okay, and then you got your three colored cables again. Um, I do believe that it is. Okay, it's probably not fuel. It's probably the uh, avionics computer and avionics computer and not, not just electronics, but maybe. I'm not sure with all the different uh, lines should be. Handholds, you'll find them all over the ship. Uh, there's a hall right here where you can look in and look at your torpedoes and go, ooh, ah, uh, okay. If you look real close, you notice the glass has got scratches and dings and dents and all that kind of stuff all over it. These torpedoes are made by A and R armaments, and they're called Clear Sky. Okay. So, and again, you're going to see tons of lockers and things like that along the wall. You don't actually see them in this area because... Uh, there aren't any. Okay. Red cabling, I think, is fuel. I think red is actually a liquid, but I could be wrong. Red piping, I think, is fuel of some kind, some kind of liquid. And some of these are just handholds like that. And that looks like just part of an air conditioning unit. Now, why is there this release lock right here? For the torpedoes, I don't know, but look at that thing, it's glitching out. Uh, that was the, that's number two, and, you, and of course, you got your fire extinguisher probably inside there. Continuing on, okay, now you can see that this is the front part of the torpedo spinner, uh, the, the pivot, uh, what do you call it, axle. This is the front part of it, and got some loose cables down here. We have to stow them somewhere do something with that. I don't like having loose cables just laying around. Uh, and then you also have the same thing on the other side. Now, through this door, I think, well, you got like a little airlock right here. It also has the lock and release, which I don't know exactly what that's going to do. Another fire extinguisher, because it's the same as the other side. But it leads into this room right here, which I, I, I believe is the captain's quarters. Okay, you got these red cables going through here, but you do have a bed, and you do have some locker space above, and I've got little shelving space on the left and the right. And then it looks like even this little shelf area has like a little handle that would slide down. Uh, this one doesn't have that. But then I've got my TV to watch my personal messages or my command messages maybe from headquarters or from uh, you know the marine headquarters or wherever and then this thing right here looks like these open revealing some kind of panel behind it it, it might be a technical panel but there it is and uh, there we go so we're out of the captain's quarters we've come all the way forward now there's no door here getting into the bomb bay you can only get it from the far side but you can look yay there we go and Moving, look at that. We got, uh, I don't know if these are lockers or if these are just access panels to get to certain tools or something behind it. I'm not sure. Okay, moving forward. This is where one of the seats would be that would go down underneath to the uh, chin turret. Yeah, moving forward. Uh, you're looking at uh, the cockpit, and you have lots of, you saw it from the outside earlier, but let's get inside the chair. It's cool. Cool animation. A couple of extra screens pop out. They line up, and then uh, my hands go on the HOTAS. Okay, now, from here I can mouse wheel. And you can zoom in on your panels, and you can kind of see them. If, you, if you're having a hard time seeing them like this, you could basically lean in to kind of see those panels. And then I uh, don't know what they're all going to display. Every one of them's probably got something different. But if you look at this cockpit, like these three displays in the center are gigantic. 
They're big. They're big, 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 big. Okay, so um, I think my I'm think I'm gonna replace our. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. And I could do it that way. Because see, what I was thinking about doing was taking this cockpit and converting it to our filling the void. I might be able to do that. Okay. And then uh, let's show you the field of view. You can pretty much see everything that comes and goes. You know, you're going to be able, you're going to have a clear field of vision. Okay, so let's get out. Seat slides back, computer drops down, arms go in, and he climbs out. And this, remember, this is the turret uh, below. And then this is the ladder to get to the upper deck. Uh, I haven't been able to get this ladder to work. Okay, so that would be one of my next bug reports. Uh, this ladder really needs to work to be able to get to the second floor. Uh, the only way we've been able to get into the second floor is by glitching through the wall. And that is something that can happen. Uh, so, all right, that is my walkthrough of the Aegis Dynamics. No, that's not my walkthrough. That's only the front. Okay, sorry, I misspoke. Let's go to the back. Okay, first of all, both sides are pretty much the same uh, this side or that side let me just double check it yep they're pretty much the same you've got some fans here that will blow you know fresh air down the hall uh, you do have uh, looks like storage lockers again one two three I wonder if the other side is called uh, four five six can I go check it out or they're probably not numbered. No, nope, there's one, two, three. Barely, you can see. I can barely see the two there. There's a three. Okay. Remember, these are the. This is the hall. Came from the center elevator room, and immediately upon getting into this hall, across from these lockers, you can go into what I believe is called the ordnance control panel. Uh, this thing right here will pop up, and it'll be a computerized display, maybe a hollow table of some kind. Uh, and there's also these buttons and knobs and gas, get, get, gadgets and stuff on the. It's like a it's like a flying bridge. You have uh, or a, a combat bridge, combat control center, or something, where um, I think that there's a lot of postulating going on. What you can actually do at, at the station. Hopefully, it's more than just drop bombs. Hopefully, it's uh, being able to coordinate command and control for your squadron, or maybe uh, helping out your turret gunners pick out targets uh, we just don't know we just don't know okay so uh, continuing on and this is the aft bomb bay section it's not showing any torpedoes in it uh, there is no way to access that bomb bay section except for the hatches on the bottom which I think is not cool. There should be a door somewhere, maybe here, maybe, maybe here, something where you can, or, or even so, maybe just convert this section right here into a door that I can open and get into my Bombay door, my Bombay section, or slash cargo hold because I'm going to convert it into cargo hold possibly. Uh, yeah, continuing along, just taking a look, look at all the scratches, more uh, lockers. It seems like lockers are your first clue that there's going to be a door. Okay, and this is the aft tail or the tail turret below. And look at the detail, gentlemen. Look at it. Yeah, you can see the pipes running all over there, the power cords and the computerized avionics and stuff like that. Okay, so now we're going to go into one of the side turrets. Uh, 
basically it's just a little L-shaped room. You go in this way, and then you go in this way, and you're in the turret chair. There would be a chair there. Uh, that's one thing that's missing from this ship is the chairs for the turrets. Uh, I'm sure that'll come soon. Uh, they might have just forgot or didn't realize, or yeah, that they left them out. Yeah, there's got to be a door. The only th the only way you can get in there during flight is this little thing right here that says, please ensure door is sealed after use. Basically, I think this is probably just a sliding door or a hatch of some kind that you have to prone and crawl through to be able to get into that section. Yeah, I hope that's not the case. And there's little things like that that are all over. Caution, control, temp, inlet. Yeah, control, temp, inlet. So I would prefer this section right here to be the engine room so he could maintain and control the uh, four engines. Uh, that would have been really cool in my opinion. Uh, and maybe do, does double duty as the ordnance officer also. Okay, all right. I mean, these look like little lockers but I don't know they could now I can't show you upstairs unless I glitch and I'm not going to do that um, yes I am okay I'll be back in just a second once I successfully glitch into the upstairs all right guys I just successfully glitched into the upper floor through the wall <laughs> and uh, this is the staircase or the ladder that you would have taken if you were able to use it to come up to the second floor and you can kind of see the observation window to the front uh, those power cords and things like that and I'm standing right in front of the top turret right so there's the top turret and that's where the chair would go up um, now one of the details really good details. I know some of the lights are glitching out and stuff. That's okay. Then we come on back. And now we're standing where the weapons racks are. And the weapons racks uh, looks like there would be about three guns there, about three guns there, uh, three guns there, and three guns there. Making a total of, what, 12 guns. So, yeah. That's quite a bit of guys with, with firepower on this ship, if I was to give everybody one gun. So let's go behind, because uh, that's a door right there. That closes, and you see we're on B deck, and uh, I don't think this closes anyway. You know what? I don't even know if this closes. I don't think so. Yep. Yeah. But once you open this... You go inside here, and this is the living quarters. Uh, escape pod 2, escape pod 5, escape pod 3, escape pod 6. Uh, yeah, there's a total of six escape pods. Wait, 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 wait. There should be like a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, and a 6. Okay. I don't know what's going on with that. I think that's air conditioning, but I'm not sure. Uh, but you can see that the, you can see out into space back here. So there are some windows. Um, see, there's two right there. You can barely see the two. There's the one. Uh, and I think that these little digital readouts might be uh, how to eject this, those pods or something. I don't know. Or maybe it's just giving you directions on how to find them. But yeah, let me crouch. There we go, and let me go to third person. There you go, and you can kind of see how cramped this little section is. Um, you're not standing up back here. You've got to cr crouch to get back here to get to your bunk, which is there, and there looks like there are air conditioners or life supports spewing out um, air. Uh, hopefully it's breathable. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you, you can't, right now you can't get into the bunks, so that's something for the future. Here you should be able to stand up not without any issue. But you can just basically see how cramped it is on B deck. 
and if you continue on through B deck, you will drop through and you'll be right by the pilot. So there it is. So thanks for coming out and checking out this video. And this is our retaliator video. And um, I'll see you in the verse.